from one of the world's most luxurious casinos nestled along the Singaporean coast and Elon Musk's dream for a world full of sustainable gigafactories to a 110-mile-long linear city in the middle of the Saudi desert and the largest water park ever built home to the planet's soon-to-be tallest water slide. Welcome to my channel. Before starting, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more future updates. Here are 10 of the biggest mega projects in the world. Between 1998 and 2004 the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia were the tallest buildings in the world at 1,483 feet The Malaysian twins were only 33 feet taller than the Sears Tower in Chicago which then became the second tallest building in the world or maybe the third The Petronas Towers held that title until the construction of Taipei 101 in Taiwan but then the Burj Khalifa dwarfed everyone in 2010 standing 2,717 feet tall still The Petronas Towers are the tallest twin skyscrapers on earth and home to National Petroleum Limited a Malaysian oil and gas company. Commonly referred to as Petronas the $1.6 billion towers also feature the world's highest two-story bridge between the 41st and 42nd floors you can head up to the observation deck on the 86th floor for an even better view of the Malaysian skyline. Argentinian American architect Cesar Pelli went with a distinctive postmodern style aiming to build a 21st century Icon for Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia seeing how the official Malaysian religion is Islam Peli combined principles of Muslim architecture and design to create a structure that oozed with Malaysian culture like most mega projects. Construction didn't come without its hiccups a bad batch of concrete brought construction to a grinding halt they were worried the weak concrete had infected everything they had built so far luckily builders only used it on one floor they tore that floor down rebuilt and kept moving still the delay caused the project about $700,000. Per day in the mid-2000s Singapore decided it wanted in on the casino game they just lifted a 40-year ban on gambling hoping to bolster tourism and boost their economy many world-famous names competed for one of two spots names like MGM Mirage and Wynn Resorts and the end Las Vegas Sands which owns the Venetian Casino Resort in Vegas won the first of two spots thanks to their vision of a $3.2 billion gambling and entertainment district called the Marina Bay Sands they put up nearly $4 billion to invest in the project that's on top of the $1.2 billion paid for the 6 million square foot site but, thanks to labor shortages and rising material prices the total development cost was estimated at 8 billion Singaporean dollars as of 2009 or about 6.8 billion US dollars they called it the most expensive standalone resort property ever built but unlike some mega project ideas they actually pulled it off today the Marina Bay Sands sports a 2 500 room hotel a 1.3 million square Foot Convention Center Amala Museum and several celebrity chef restaurants including two Wolfgang Pucks meanwhile. The casino floor is a gambler's paradise with 500 tables and one 600 slot machines the coup de grace if you will is the Sands Sky Park a 1100 foot skyway connecting all three towers you can dive into the infinity swimming pool while enjoying a gorgeous view of the Singapore skyline foreign billion dollar luxury city a living. Paradise on Earth but as of today Forest City Malaysia is a ghost town full of empty roads and deserted high rises in 2006 a Chinese development firm called Country Garden announced their plans to build the massive city it was a 20 year project set in Johor Bahru a Malaysian city north of Singapore according to Bloomberg the Malay government saw how successful Singapore was with tourism and wanted to cash in the original idea pitched by Malaysia was to build a new metropolis near the causeway connecting Singapore to Malaysia then Country Garden stepped in with their $100 billion forest city idea which involved building artificial islands a few hundred yards off the Singaporean coast Country Garden sold the dream of luxury apartments hotels offices golf courses and tech parks to eager Chinese investors who sank thousands of dollars into the soon to be built apartments developers anticipated that 700 000 People would quickly move into the new city as of 2019 only 500 call at home according to Business Insider the population has supposedly grown to a few thousand but it's still less than 5% of the expected residents so if you wanted to how much would it cost to move to Forest City unfortunately prices have skyrocketed in recent years in 2017. A Forest City apartment only cost about $170,000 today they cost about $1.14 million you're better off buying in Johor Bahru where the average sale price is about $141,000 and there are actual signs of life down the Red Sea between Saudi Arabia and Egypt when you suddenly see your reflection along a 110 mile mirror but wait a minute that's not a mirror. Instead it's a 1 600 foot tall 660 foot wide 110 mile long building and there's another running parallel on the other. 
Side what you're currently looking at is Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's Neo M project better known as The Line. Some may call it the sustainable city of the future others think it sounds a little dystopian the $725 billion. City will run on nothing but sustainable energy there won't be any cars either instead the MBS imagines a high speed. Underground train that can get you from end to end in 20 minutes flat residents will enjoy a lush outdoor landscape. Between the two mirrored buildings those buildings idea really will house and employ about 9 million people the line will also remain under the watchful gaze of AI MBS says it's to use data models to find ways to improve the city. But it sounds a little matrixy to us it's all part of something called Vision 2030 which aims to make the oil rich. Country the world leader in sustainable innovation work began on the line in late 2022 with drone footage coming out. In October showing what looks like the initial groundwork according to Saudi officials you could be living in the line as soon as 2023 or is it on the line what about at the line according to Elon Musk when the Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada is complete it will have the largest footprint of any structure in the world bigger than the Great Pyramid the Empire State Building and the Burj Khalifa counting multiple levels we're talking about 15 million square feet however every inch will run on renewable energy now you've probably seen Elon talking with Leonardo DiCaprio about the Gigafactory and its environmental impact according to the Tesla CEO's calculations it would take a 100 gigafactories worldwide to power the entire planet with sustainable energy unfortunately the current gigafactory in nevada is about 30 percent complete tesla finally announced plans to expand the factory in 2022 but the full-scale building is still a distant dream elon's been thinking about the gigafactory his whole life but official plans didn't kick off until 2014 when panasonic agreed to invest in the five billion dollar project with a how Figured out it was time to determine the where Tesla toured several locations never once thinking about northern Nevada but after a little convincing and several private trips Tesla finally settled on the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center or trick now while the Nevada factory is the biggest it's not the only gigafactory Tesla owns Giga New York Located in Buffalo focuses on power pack batteries and solar panels Giga Texas the company's newest factory in Austin serves as Tesla HQ and acts as an assembly site for Model Y's Model 3 Cybertrucks and Cyber Semis 2 more. Gigafactories exist outside the US one in Shanghai China and the other in Berlin Germany. Jubail Saudi Arabia used to be an ancient fishing village on the Persian Gulf it was full of deserted suburbs. Until the mid-1970s when an American engineering company called the Bechtel Corporation broke ground on the largest industrial city in the world spanning more than 687 square miles upon its completion the New site contributed to about 7% of Saudi Arabia's total GDP at the turn of the millennia the Saudi provided housing for 120,000 new residents and built a brand new 18000 student university. Today Yubal is a major player in the global energy market attracting the best and brightest tech and business minds. Across dozens of countries when it's done Jubail 2 could make them the major player during peak working seasons. The Jubail 2 project employs 20,000 workers per month about $4 billion has been invested in. Infrastructure which includes hundreds of miles of roads water and waste facilities and utilities another 18. Phases over 22 years the current timetable has Jubail 2 completed by 2024 but we'll see if any pandemic related. Itself a mega project that costs some $45 billion the area was still a desert when Qatar won the World Cup bid in 2010. They wanted to have it finished before the event, but according to ESPN writer Mark Ogden the city feels more like a dystopian scene straight out of a Christopher Nolan movie when it's done Lucille is expected to house about 450. 50 people including 250,000 residents 190,000 office workers and 60. Considered to be the crown jewel of this artificial city Aquadar will feature 36 water slides and attractions alongside A. 279 foot tower home to the world's highest water slide when it's done the park will cover about 300 square for northeastern africa it flows north from lake tana in ethiopia through sudan and into egypt some 1 600 miles downstream in the early 2010s ethiopia announced plans to build a five billion dollar dam on the blue nile the project ethiopian renaissance dam or gert in a nutshell the point of the gert was to supply ample electricity to ethiopia a Ethiopia can sell electricity to the surrounding counties like Sudan and Egypt the dam was supposed to be opened in 2017 but feuds between Ethiopia Sudan and Egypt kept stalling the project Egypt relies heavily on the Nile River and believes the Gert will significantly limit the amount of water available by the time it reaches Cairo Ethiopia says otherwise while Sudan has been stuck in the middle Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ali cut the grand opening ribbon that summer 
across the Bayan Kala Mountains and into northwestern China. Thanks for watching.